Hello, I am your host, Kathy Chester, and welcome to the Move It or Lose It podcast, a podcast about all things that move the mind, body, and soul. The Move It or Lose It podcast is for information, awareness, and inspirational purposes only. I am not a doctor, and I don't even play one on TV. So please consult your doctor before making any medical decisions. The views expressed by advertisers, guests, or contributors are their opinions and not necessarily the views of the Move It or Lose It podcast. Hello, so we are with Adam Powell. You may remember him. He happens to be a very good friend of mine and many of yours. So I got Adam on today because... You may remember he had some difficult things. He's had surgery. And so now he's on the rebound. And we're going to find out today exactly what his journey is moving forward and how he's moving forward with his life with MS. So Adam, Yay. Yay. miss you. Love Hi, you. I miss you. I haven't seen you I know. in like months. And you this live was like, like the only thing we could come to get, right? So why are you not here? You could be doing the podcast That's with me true. here. You could, but look how like look how nice and comfortable I am, and how set up I, know. I am. I know, and plus we wanted to see your backdrop. I got this new background. I just which is super cool. My very official cool. logo over here. Yeah. All my I mean, state, very my professional. I you know. Got, so what you want it? All you have to do is take a look on. If you're just listening, all you have to do is then go on YouTube when this airs and. There's Adam Powell, there they everything, are, all of them, everything. everything. You, so every way that you can bam. stalk me. Yeah. Just in your Gosh, face. Gosh, Adam, like drop the mic. In your face. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So let's talk about what happened. You got let's a mess. Talk. <laughs> I got a mess. Yeah. Where do we start? You got a mess. Where do we start? And then, so this recent thing, what happened? The knee, the whole knee thing. You know, I was, I went on my cross country journey in summer and it was amazing got to meet up with a ton of different people with ms and see all parts of the world blah 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 yeah. i got home i tried to get back into my routine and then right. i was doing the challenges again and of all times we got done with the challenge and i was just sitting on the ground we were talking where there's like 10 of us in there i was just talking on right. zoom and my knee locked up just out of nowhere Dang. wasn't even doing anything i was sitting right knee locked up and unfortunately, I knew exactly what that meant because I've had many knee problems before in the past. And a lot of people ask me, is it MS related? No, it's not. Yeah. It has nothing to do with MS. It's right. just old injuries coming back to haunt me, but I had to take care of it. Yeah. Like it wasn't having that happen. Like it's a torn meniscus is what it is. Right. I knew it's what it was as soon as right. it happened. It's not super painful, really, but it changes how I do everything and how I think about everything because I know that once it locks on me again, it's just mm -hmm. going to keep doing it. Right. So you had to watch how you walk, you watch how you step, you had to watch, I couldn't work out like I wanted to. So I just made the decision early to be like, you know what, I got to go get this fixed. Might as well do it now. Right. Uh, do you, are you happy you did it or do oh, you yeah. regret it? I'm super happy I did it. Yeah. I mean, it turned into much more of a surgery than I thought it was going to be. Right. But, you know, I got over it. I expected to do the surgery, be back the next week in therapy with my therapist. Just that's it. You know, a quick little yeah. thing, which it would have been if it was just a scope, but it didn't right. end up being a scope. They had to right. go in, they had to actually repair it, sew it down, do all that right. stuff. So it Dude, was up... it because it was, it was for, it happened so long ago and it just kept because no, you waited just, so long no it wasn't even that because okay. like i said as soon as i as soon as it locked on me that's i made my appointment with the doctor immediately and it's the same knee guy that i've been going to for it just wasn't anything that i did or didn't do it just happened you know right i've, yeah. I've had bad knees my whole life so i've had to deal with them back and forth you know that was my eighth right. knee surgery so dang eight wow so, so now, had, once you got that down, did it affect on recovery time? Did it affect your MS? That was my biggest concern because mm -hmm. I've had the surgeries before. I've had this mm -hmm. exact same surgery before, twice actually, one on each knee. And I didn't know what my body was going to do. Right. Like I knew I could recover from the actual surgery itself, but mm -hmm. I just didn't know what my body was going to do to the body being traumatized by the surgery sure that was my concern but luckily it was nothing 
It, yeah. it didn't affect me at all. It Thank was God. basically just like all the rest of them I've had and I yeah. was able to bounce back. And yeah, I mean, it was a hell of a lot harder trying to be on crutches for six weeks. Right. Right. Because my balance and do all that stuff. And, you know, you know, my left leg is the yeah. bad leg. Yeah. So I was relying on my left a lot mm -hmm. for six weeks. So now yeah. I have to get How's that your upper back. body strength? Upper body is still good. I mean, yeah, I've lost, good. I've lost, lost a lot of muscle, a lot of muscle tone in the last couple yeah. of months because, you know, I just haven't been able to do what I normally do. Sure. Of course. But you'll get I can that get it back. back. Yeah. Absolutely. I can still I mean, pick it takes myself longer up with us. when I fall. Yeah. You know, and which is the, the most thing. important. Yeah. And having to use the crutches helped yep. upper body strength. Yep. So yeah, that crutches, It felt like it was upper body wise, it was easy crutches. Yeah. It was balance that was just way. Right. Because my left right. leg just did not like it. It doesn't like it at all. Oh, so I, I had to not. battle that. I fell probably half dozen times because yeah. of the crutches. You know, they slide yeah. out and. Sure. You, know, you just can't recover. Any, anything broken or were you okay? I broke a pot at a restaurant. Does that count? <laughs> as long as you didn't break you. Nothing nothing good. was broken good. on good. me. Good. But good. But there there is a big giant pot at a restaurant bar that is no longer oh, there. Oh no. I broke it. They forgave you. Did you have to pay for it? This is, you know, actually this is a funny story. So I'm gonna tell it. So okay. we <laughs> go, go for it. We, we go and play trivia. I play trivia with like uh -huh. my neighbors, my tattoo oh, yeah, artist. Yeah. And so we go up there one day and it's just going to be me and my tattoo artist and right. some of his friends. I got to see that guy soon, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, so he drops us all off there because I this was like a week and a half after surgery. So I was right. still, couldn't bend my leg, still on crushes, still in a big old brace with the, you know, right. everything. So we go up there, we show up, We walk, I crutch up to the door and on the, on the door it says, there's no trivia tonight. So we're like- right. Oh, shit now what do we do <laughs> so we're waiting for him to go park as we're trying to discuss what to do and i've right. been standing for a while so i was like i need to like rest on something so there's this big giant pot sitting outside there <laughs> you know big old one of those big old concrete pots right. I'm like, you know what? i'm gonna lean on that thing so i leaned on that thing and then it just toppled over <laughs> so like as i was going down like right I was laughing. I was laughing. And right. as I was falling, I said, here we go. Cause like, here we go. This is, right. this is my life now. And there's nothing I can do to change it. Right. So down I went, the pot just shatters into <laughs> a million pieces. I'm on the ground just laughing. Cause it's hilarious right. to me. Cause like I said, there's nothing you can do with that. Point. Right. So it's all good. There's some other people that were there showing up to trivia and they're yeah. you know, worried about get, helping me get up. I'm like, I'm, right. you know, I'm fine. Like I'm just let me lay here for a little right. while. I'll be all right. right. So I was just sitting on the curb. So the best part about it is Lucy, which is Donnie's wife. Yeah. She goes inside and tells them that I broke a pot, you know, <laughs> and it, just so they could clean it up basically. Right. And so I'm still sitting on the curb. Oh, they're got, probably terrified. I've got this giant leg brace on. I've got crutches. Oh, I got boy. all this. <laughs> so this poor, poor soul, one of their waiters comes out and he sees the big broken pot. And right. he's like, oh, he's like, oh, he's like, I'll, uh, you know, I gotta get this taken care of. And he looks at me and he's like, are you okay? And of course my stupid ass just can't shut my mouth. Oh, but I shocking. turn my head back at him. With this giant knee brace on, wearing shorts in the winter, because I always do. Right, because you, you are. And the only thing I said was, look what you did to my leg. <laughs> what a jerk you are. So they did said you make the, look, him cry? the look on his face was priceless. I didn't you get to see so it. Mean. I didn't get to you see it. You are so mean. They saw it. And they, he had to process the information first. Because at first he's like, oh, God. But then he's like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. There's like a brace there already. And there's that. Of course, I was just like, I'm just kidding. I was like, I'm fine. Like, you I'm sorry about so your mean. pot. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry I broke your pot. But <laughs> Oh, what a mean. I can so picture you doing that. You are so mean. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was a funny story. I had to tell oh, it. well, hopefully yeah. the pot's okay. They have to get a new one, I assume. Yeah, we went <laughs> no up there. No one's going like, to put that together. We went up there again the next week, and now there's only uh, one. There's only one pot now. So okay. Was, <laughs> so there was discussion about me going out and breaking the other one, too, so it's even. But I decided. No, don't do it. it. I, 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 I didn't do don't it. Don't do it. Oh, well, thank you for sharing that. That'll make <laughs> me laugh today. Uh <laughs> So now your recovery time. So now where are you at with that? All right. So I had to be on crutches for six weeks. Okay. The first two weeks, I could not bend it at all. Like it okay. was perfectly straight. Couldn't do anything with it. When I went for my follow-up appointment, 
-hmm. he allowed me to open the brace up and then I could bend at 90 degrees. So that took a while to get to, but of course, as soon as I was allowed to start bending, I bent. And by the time I got, you know, a week later, I was bending to 90 degrees easily without pain. Yeah. But I still had to just, I have weight on it. I finally got into therapy with med sport at U of M. It took a while to get into them. So I I had like one visit while I was still on crutches Mm -hmm. and we did a little bit of work, just working on the hips, the hamstrings, the thighs, you know, firing the muscles, getting them used to it. But then they said that I could start kind of putting weight on it. So Mm -hmm. I did. So that I was using crutches still, but I was like kind of just walking with them to get right. used to the motion, get used to some weight here and there. Sure. And the week after that, I got released and it said, you, okay. know, you, can, you can start walking again, which I knew would take me, you know, a week or so. I still use crutches right. for a while. Yeah. And I just kept going at it. And then therapy was good. You know, I kept working on the muscles, all that stuff. Yeah. I am about a month ahead of where I thought I'd be right now. Wow. Because I've awesome. already I've already graduated orthotherapy. Yeah. Just for the knee. And I'm back with Jess, who's my neurotherapist. Okay. okay. Which is was my goal all along because yeah. the right leg feels better than the left leg. It feels more stable. Okay. It still feels strong. My left leg mm-hmm. is the one that just doesn't want to do things. My ankle right. just lands wherever it wants to. My right. knee hyperextends. So now I need to work on the MS stuff. So I'm back right. with Jess now. Sure. So I had my first appointment with her yesterday and okay. it was great. Good. I am stiff and sore today from yeah. it because I had to do a six minute walk test and that yeah. damn near killed me. But yeah, I'm sure I survived. And I am still using my stick, just a one, yeah. but you know, I'll get to the point where I can't because we just got to work on my balance. My balance right. is the biggest issue. Right. For sure. So, but I'm back with Definitely. that. Like I said, I'm ahead of where I wanted to be. I yeah. got back to the gym the other day and did some yoga and stretching. I'm not going to start lifting or anything yeah. until she gives me the go ahead. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You'll have to come over here. We'll do some balance stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. I'm so proud of you because you've had like a, I mean, even though it sucked what happened, you've had a really good attitude about going back at it. And I know there's yeah. been down days, obviously. There was, there, it was it, a, it, it was a long six weeks. Yeah. yeah. Like I, once I could start bending my leg though, mm-hmm. I could actually drive again. Yeah. Cause I could fit in my car. I don't drive with right. my legs. So I right. just, I, I remember seeing that. I could fit so I was like, in my car though. Right. So like, me being as big as I am, I could barely fit in anyone else's cars. Right. So like it was the most awkward way to sit. Like my dad's got a big full size truck. Right. And I would be like propped up as far back <laughs> as I can with my leg just barely fitting right. under the dash. Right. It was terrible. Yeah. So, like, so you well, have some pretty long legs. I got some really long legs. Yes. So wow. yeah, once I got to drive again, it felt good because I could actually yeah. you know, take myself and for sure. the therapy stuff like that mm-hmm. and you know i'd hobble myself to go out to lunch you know stuff like yes. that it was well yeah because you want to get, out, wanna get out and you yeah. have that personality that you don't want to be stuck in the house i no. mean you like to be with other people you are very um extroverted yes. and i think that that is really like from the time i met you i believe that that keeps you going i believe that yeah. that keeps you um, wanting to, to get better. It keeps you wanting to push harder because I think that so many of our warriors, so many of our MSers end up staying, getting so sad, getting depressed because they stay stuck. Yep. And it, we it, all it know That's with that black one. hole that we, we all go there. We all get to yeah. that spot and we enter in to that dark area and it's like, Oh crap, here I go. Here I go. Yep. And it's all the sad crap, all the what yeah. ifs, all the, I, I know this is going to happen to me. And it's, we begin to go down it, but it's, it's how we keep ourselves from staying there. And because mm-hmm. it, once we go there, it's really hard to come out. And it's, so it's going to happen though. You are mm-hmm. going to go there, but like you said, you can go there, but you just can't live there. Right. You got to get right. out. And you it's can, hard. I mean, you can grieve. But- but you have yeah. to have a way to get out. And whether that's people in your life that are around that can help you get out, or if you're able to do it on your own, like kudos to you. But 
I think that you have a really great ability to be able to get out of that. Now, what do you think that is for you? Is it a combo of yourself and others helping you out of that? It's, I think it's more on me because I've, okay. from the early on. Well, thanks. The, so I guess I'm worthless. Yeah, you're just, <laughs> you're, you're, chop, you're chop liver is all you are. I'm kidding. Me. No, I'm but asking like from, honestly. from early on, mm-hmm. you know, with MS, I didn't know anybody with MS. Right. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have anything. So like mm-hmm. when I crawled myself out of that first deep, dark depression hole, I did it all on my own. Yeah. So like, I've kind of gotten used to it, you know, and yeah. I knew I could do it once. I I can do it again. Right. So that's right. what I did. And it's yeah. like, it all becomes, I don't know how much you want me to swear. How much can I swear? What, you can do whatever you want. I can do whatever Go I want. Go for it. Yeah. The whole thing, like what got me through all this is I am stubborn as fuck. Yes, that's I it. do know this. I do that know this it. about you. That's all it is. Yep. That's what got me where I am today. That got me out yeah. of my wheelchair. That got me walking. That got me through the surgery. I just, yeah. I refuse to let something get me down and I just yeah. find any way I can. And yeah. I've had to adapt a lot of my stuff and it's super right. frustrating and it's super hard. And it's a battle for me to take every single step I take. It's, it yeah. hurts. Every step I, I take hurts. I watch you and you but never give it. up. And, and that's I, you like hardly important. ever hear me complain about it either. No. You can see it on my face, but (laughs) I won't say it. (laughs) No. And that's what I I love the most. And when we met is that um, your ability to keep pushing and not give up is something I so respect. And and obviously what I do for a living and how I I work with MS patients Mm -hmm. and working with you was so, um, it's such a, a bright thing in my life because it's, you know, working with people that obviously doing life coaching is, is part of my heart. It's what I love to do and to help people when they feel like they can't move forward and helping them see ways to move forward in their life when they've lost stuff and working with people with MS. And we both know how much it sucks and um, figuring a way to see past that and to see like some of the good things that it doesn't take our whole life. And that it doesn't, it, it's up to us to find things beyond that, that don't define everything or else we could, we go to that black hole mm-hmm. and life sucks. We've got this and that. So to get out of that, it's, there's a ways to get out. I honestly believe as you do, that our biggest defense is exercise without yes. that. We're really screwed. And yes. what puts what we put in our mouth obviously food and exercise, but exercise Mm -hmm. has so much to do with our attitude, how we see the world, how we see our day. And with those six weeks, I'm sure that fighting that depression was pretty tough. It was, but like, I I knew the end was in sight. Yeah. So like, I just kept looking towards it and like, even the little victories, like, I know you talk about your little victories all the time. Like yeah. my first little victory for the surgery was when he said I could bend my knee again. Yeah. So I was like, all right. Yes. Yeah. So like now I could, work, I could work on that. And I did yes. work on that. And then it's like, Good. oh, you can put a little weight on that. All right. Yeah. yeah I can do that. Yeah. Like I said, yes. I'm a month ahead of where I thought I'd be now. And that's so awesome. And I always want people to do with, except with MS or whatever your autoimmune thing is celebrate the little victories. And I think we just bypass it. It's like, oh, that wasn't really big. Yes, no, it was. It's big for us. Yeah. So that's When I you agree. can move your toe, celebrate mm-hmm. that. And so I always try to do videos of like, you know, the clients doing even the tiniest thing to them because it's a big victory. Celebrate it. it. So, and I love that you have that attitude. I think so that all that comes down to though is, and it's hard not to do, but it's comparing yourself to who you used to be before yes that. and that's absolutely. a really hard thing not it is. to do and i i, I get think stuck it's in harder for i still get stuck in it oh but, for sure but when i do get stuck there i always go back to the other part where i was like all right yeah i could i used to be able to do this i used to be a big athlete i used to be big strong i could do anything right. i could pick up a house if i wanted to you know? <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to do that anymore right. and i'll get stuck in that that little way Adam, work. I did not know you could pick up a house. I did. I, did. <laughs> I actually moved somebody once and they didn't move into a new house. I just picked up their house and moved it to another Dang. place. I know. I could it's have really used your help back then. I know. Yeah. I know. Actually, man, I saw, sorry, I'm sidetracking. I saw a picture of myself from like 12 years ago. Yeah. So like a Christmas party, it came up on memories and I was like, didn't he, I didn't even recognize myself. 
Really? Because like I didn't have any hair. I had shaved Were head. Were you stoned? No, no, no. Oh, I okay. had a shaved head. <laughs> I still had like a beard. Right. But I was so big. And yeah. I, when I say big, I don't mean I no, was No, just fat. normal. I was like my head looked like yeah. it was like like a shrunken head on the size of the rest of my body. Right. And I was like, holy crap. Because like, it is as a you funny know, thing. Yeah. I lost like 60 pounds when I got diagnosed. It is so I, weird. I know. I shed all my muscle. Yeah. I hadn't it's seen weird because it's not it. like, it's, so it's not big. I'll look at pictures so when the weird. kids were, you know, before I had it. And I'm like, I was like a size eight, which is small. It's not like, I know you right. don't know anything about women's sizes, no, but it's not. like, now I'm like a two and I was a zero and I'm like, that's sickening. And it's like, it's not, but when you have MS and you can only eat certain things, mm -hmm. it's like trying to get back up. I'll never be an eight again. I will I'll never, never see be that size. The size that I was either. That you were. Like, so, I can build, I can build muscle, right? build strength, but I will right. never get that mass back. Exactly. Like, you know, my right. legs have basically like atrophy. Like you can see the atrophy in my legs. <laughs> so like I, mean, I could build the muscle, but it just doesn't yeah. get bigger. I mean, Which I'm not trying muscle. to be like that. Anymore, right, exactly. You know? I don't need and to And that's be that what guy. I often say to like clients, especially when I'm training men. Like our goal is to have lean muscle, right? We want muscle so we can we can do what we need to do. We mm -hmm. want muscle so that if we tumble, we can bring ourselves back up. Mm -hmm. And do we want to look good? Yes. And I always tell clients, you don't need to feel bad about that. No. You don't need to feel bad because we want to, we want to be able to do everything we can do. We want to be able to enjoy our lives. But if you want to look good, you don't need to feel bad about that. Mm -hmm. And of course, the first thing that we want is to be able to use our legs, use our body to be able to have the best life we can. And so I think that you do a really good job at promoting that stuff on Facebook. Honestly, when I, even I'm doing the women's support group, I'll hear people ask me like, Hey, tell Adam, you, I said, hi. And I'm like, yeah, I will, you know, Adam as well. So yeah, um, just because I'm not allowed to be in your group. So I got to infiltrate it somehow. <laughs> well, we have to do ours. We have to figure <laughs> this out when we are doing it. No, and I've heard, I've heard very good things, very good things about that. Good. Group too. And I'm good. glad some other people have been joining it. And yeah, it's, I've heard the women are things. really great. It's a yeah. good, um, it's a good group because it's, it's all different ages. Yep. And we've got girls, women that are like newly diagnosed from women that have had it for 30, 40 years. So it's a good group, but it's like, you know what we want to do together and mm -hmm. figure out a spot that's midway that we can have it in person though. Right. So right, I think right. that'd be good. So we've got to get that moving. We do. We do. Soon. What would so be like midway? That. Would that be like Clarkston? That's what I'm thinking. Probably? Like Waterford Clarkston would yeah, be it. That could work. Maybe we can start it in March. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So now tell me um, moving forward. I know that your, your speaking engagements, which I think are, would be phenomenal for you because you have that ability to spark hope and yeah. joy. So you've got some coming up. So tell me what you're, you're going to go to the physical therapy place and talk about your I, physical therapy. I am. I was at therapy the other day and Jess, mm -hmm. who's my therapist, she asked me if I wanted to. So she comes up to me, I'm with another therapist because I was still with med sport at the time. And she's like, hey, I got a question to ask. And she goes, do you want to do a talk? And then immediately right there, I just said, yes. Like, I didn't even wait for her to tell me anything extra. So I was just like, yes, of course I do. So she said, well, at U of M Flint, they want some people to come in and talk to their physical therapy Did you let students. them know that you are not a U of M anything, that you only like Michigan State? What? Well, okay. All right. I do. <laughs> but, but I am a U of M Flint alumni. So... I graduated from there. It's not That's my fault pretty pathetic. that I still like Michigan <laughs> State. All but right. yeah, but no, so that's supposed to be happening in the next two weeks, I think. So really? go up and talk to like okay. two of their classes. And I think there's going to be some other people with MS to do it. And yeah. it's just going to be, I'm going to tell them like what therapy did for me. Yeah. You know, and it saved my life. It got me yeah. walking again. You know, and yeah. it's going to hopefully get into their heads that, you know, I'm a different yeah. type of person. People with MS are different types of people. You can't just have a cookie cutter option right. for people. Right. You need to listen to them, listen to their bodies, know right. how they can do something because yeah. I can figure out a way to do something, but it's right. not going to be the way that 
you think a normal person can. Exactly. So I'm hoping and that so I often can we hear that, that. And that's so good, Adam, because so often I I get them after a really bad physical therapy, mm-hmm. you know, time where they didn't listen. And and of course, as you know, a lot of physical therapists absolutely listen and they're wonderful. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, the ones that don't, they get a bad rap because mm-hmm. they don't understand multiple sclerosis. And I get them after, and they're in so much pain because they've not been worked with properly. And so I'm really happy that you can do that and that you're able to spread that awareness yeah. that we are we are not the normal birds. We are no. different. So I, I had to do that help. with my orthotherapist, yeah. like because as soon as I went and saw him for the first time, I had to tell him, listen. Like yeah. I'm not, you're not going to get me back to like running marathons or playing sports right. and stuff. Like my baseline is different. Yeah. Like if I can get back to how I was before, which mm-hmm. I can barely walk, but if I can yeah. get back to barely walking, that's my baseline. Yeah. Like you're not doing anything wrong. You're doing your job completely well because yeah. that's where I was before this. Right. But I like, you know me, I don't, I have no problem telling somebody something. Right. Yeah. So like it worked well, and out you're well. You're really good and, at advocating for yeah. yourself. And, and I think that's and... really important because I think in everything, sometimes we think it's just, you know, going to our neurologist, but it's in everything. I mean, you've had to do it in every doctor. I've had to do it. I mean, with a with my ophthalmologist and that was a neuro one. And I was like, I waited a year to see you and you don't know anything more than a regular ophthalmologist. And it just wasn't a good fit. He just wasn't a doctor that knew what he was doing. So it's right. like, I had to advocate for myself and I'm going to see another one, but it gets exhausting. And so I think that those are the times when we rely on each other or support group to say, give me some hope because I'm getting exhausted by going to these doctors mm-hmm. who look at me like, what do you want from me? I'm telling you what the answer is. And you're like, no, no, you're not. You're <laughs> not at all. So it, it's important. And I think the way you go about it and you don't give up, but you keep going, but you're not an ass to them. You're just like, this isn't working. So I mean, I, think I could be an ass to them yeah, maybe you sometimes. Could. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes it is aggravating. You have to be like, no, but I think going in and, and coming in with a attitude, I want to talk to you about it yeah, rather yep. than I want to yell at you about this. Yep. That doesn't get us anywhere. And that's, so. that's how it was with the therapist. I was like, this is, this is where I am. Yeah, like you're not going to be you're not going to get me to something else. And I was like, I'll right. tell you, if you tell me to do something, and I can't do it, I'll tell you, I can't do it. Right. Like, I'm not going go exactly. to go try. I'm not going to try to do that because I'm not stupid. Right. So it worked well, like the therapist that I had, because I had a therapist. And then there was a student there, too. So she was studying. Right. Uh, you know, she just graduated or whatever. So she right. did a lot of stuff for me. And I think, I think I might have taught her some stuff, too. Because I think oh, I'm she sure. Was, not used to dealing with somebody with MS. And now yeah. that she has, I think it opened up her mind a little bit to it. And she realized yeah. that, oh yeah, I can't just do this. Like they mm-hmm. need to tell me what they can or can't do or yeah. all this stuff. So I mean, I Adam, a lot of the physical therapists that I've, or the, um, the doctors I've interviewed have started with a patient that they've worked with that has MS. And it's so it's so inspired them because they've watched and it's so different that that one patient has been like the launch to bring them to study it more. And that's what they've gone into Mm -hmm. because it is such a wild disease. I mean, it's like, wait, what? And then this, but it doesn't make sense because then it could be anywhere. And because it is such a fascinating for a scientist, a doctor, someone like that, who really wants to understand what in God's name this disease does, yeah. it is very interesting. So, I mean, absolutely, you don't know what you're going to do with it, with this new physical therapist. I mean, you may very well, you know, be the person that gets her to really want to know more about this. And right. Lord knows we need more. Like so maybe that she be... wants to go into like neurotherapy now. Absolutely. Maybe she Which switch over awesome. to that, you know? Absolutely. Which that like leads me to the next thing that I'm supposed to be doing. One of my other friends, she's a physical therapist as well. Uh-huh. She wants me to talk. She's teaching a class. She wants me to talk to their class and she wants to like bring me up late, have me tell them like my story, my diagnosis. And then she wants them to make me work out, to give me things to do. Good. To see Good. if they can like they can modify it enough yeah. to work for me. 
So I'm good. like, yeah, that'd be great. I would, I'll yes, do that I love that. <laughs> I like that. Those are really good things. I'm so glad you're doing them. And I think that more MS patients need to be available and ready to be open to doing those. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this a little bit before. And I think that what it is, Adam, and you you explain your um, how you don't do this, how you don't get here. But oftentimes, an injury like what you had happened, you got the surgery done. It took that six weeks. Now, you and I both know that depression is so high with MS. Mm -hmm. It's, well, I think it's the most, auto. It, I think we have the highest depression rate of any of the autoimmune diseases. I wouldn't So woohoo for us. Yep. But I think that it basically, when you have a six week time to just kind of be there with yourself and just kind of think on all the stuff, it can lead to a very, very depressed state where okay. you don't want to do anything anymore. You just kind of give up and think, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And yay, if it goes away, but if it doesn't, then I guess I'm where I'm at. And so what would you say to those patients that have an injury? Maybe they didn't decide to do surgery, but they've had an injury and they're out for a couple months. And they decided, you know, I don't know if I can do this. And I'm just going to stay here. Bed and TV, Netflix is the easy way. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to stay here. And now we both know that's the end. Because once yeah. you made that mind up, once you got that, then it's just bed. And it your is. body it will is. atrophy. It's, I mean, it is all a mind game. It's a mind game. Mm -hmm. It's, and I've, I've said seen this it. You've a seen bunch it. of times. A couple different things. So the one of them is, it's as simple as this. If you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. That's it. Like yeah. if you if you don't think you can do it, you're already beat. You're already defeated. Yeah. You will not do it. If you think you can do it, at least you have a chance. You got some right. hope. And that's right. what I would tell people is get, have that little bit of hope. It may not be right now. Yeah. It may not be how you think it's going to be but as right. long as you're a little bit better than yesterday that's all that matters absolutely you never know how strong you are until you have to be so absolutely. you may think that you're like i can't do that you don't know if you can or not you need to be put in that situation right and you'll, you'll be amazed at what happens if you have yeah. that right mindset and you think you can do something if you think you can do it go for it absolutely well, i'm one step in front of the other you mm -hmm. know one day at a time it doesn't you're not going to be a superhero the next day, oh. but just trying is, is amazing. And when I see those little tiny steps forward, and then all of a sudden, a couple of weeks later, a month later, it's amazing at the accomplishments that are made mm -hmm. and the tears and the, the excitement that they, that they're able to do a little bit more, a little bit more independence. And it's, it's that stuff that excites me. And then that darkness, you know, starts to leave. And mm -hmm. that's the exciting thing. And what, what would you say? I mean, I know for me, cause I hear it. What would you say keeps our MS warriors, our MSers from getting up and just wanting to try? I mean, you see when even we, we've done the Zooms and it's, it's so tailored for our, our MS um, people. What do you think keeps so many from even getting started? I think they're just scared. Yeah. I think they're just scared <laughs> of maybe that they can't do it mm -hmm. or they're scared maybe of judgment because they yeah. can't do it or they yeah. think that they they're stuck in their head of I'm never going to be able to do what I used to do. Right. There's a lot of different reasons that people yeah. don't start something. Agreed. But I think that's it. I think it's fear because yeah. not even sure exactly what they're afraid of, but they're afraid of something. Yeah. And I they agree. don't realize that. You know, like you said, one small thing, as long as it's right. better than it was yesterday, that's yeah. a win. Yeah. You keep doing Absolutely. that, you get one better the next day, the next yeah. day, those end up becoming something big. Absolutely. But you have to start somewhere. If you don't start, Absolutely. you're never going to go in that direction. Yeah. Well, you know how much I love you. You know how much I respect the fact that each time something happens, you keep, keep going. And so, you know, I'm going to be on that walk with you. I'll be there. And you know, May I'm going to get your butt 19th. over here. May 19th. Yeah. So you're going to start yeah. this pretty quickly. You're going to start doing, getting all this stuff ready. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. I have leading up to more stuff I'm doing. I have like a yeah. 
bike run event, motorcycle okay. run in a bar. I did it last year. We're doing the second yes. annual and hopefully it'll be a lot bigger. And it's on Cinco de Mayo. So man, that could make yeah. it bigger. Woo yes. So yeah, I, I really got to start getting out and trying to get, you know, people to donate some stuff so I can raffle it off. I have a- uh, Yes. My friend's bands are is playing the event, which is really okay. cool because I've went to elementary school with two of them. Okay. I've been good friends with a lot of them since college. So it's just, it's very cool. It's awesome that they're playing it. And yeah, I'm looking forward. I'll to help it. you. I'll raffle off some stuff for you. I'll yeah. give you some things to raffle. Maybe I really I'll do get some training. My, yeah. Do the training. I really want to get yeah. like my tattoo artists and stuff to show up. Yes. And, you know, bikers That'd love be really tattoos. Cool. Oh, so for sure. It'd be perfect. So yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward definitely. to that because that gives me something to do. It like, yeah, it, it, I have a, I have a reason now. Yeah. So now that I can be back to doing it, I'm not stuck sitting at home yeah. anymore. It's been, and good. that's the key. What you just said, Adam, we have to have a reason. And we mm -hmm. talked about that in our support group is that, you know, a lot of, a lot of us are on disability. A lot of um, MS warriors are on disability right now. And they're older and they may not need an income right now. That may not be where they're at. But I think once you feel like there's no significance and you're not helping in the world, that's when your depression kicks in even more. And if you're just sitting there and you don't feel like you're offering anything to society, then I think there you feel like you're tapped out. Mm -hmm. Like there's, what's the reason for me being here? And th there's no reason that you're tapped out until you breathe your last breath. You always have something to offer. You always do. And so uh, every time. And so I hope that this brings hope and inspiration to people that feel that they don't have anything to offer because you always do. You always have something to offer. If it's a phone call or something that somebody needs to hear, something that spreads joy. There's so many people that can write. I can't, I'm not a great writer anymore. No. My hands don't work so well but people that can write cards or, or letters. And there's so many things through the um, MS society that needs help. And the MS um, can do MS. There's so many things that, that you can do to help others, even in the neighborhood. So um, we hope that, and Adam and I are coming up with some fun stuff that we want to do and doing a support group and stuff like that, that really does some different things, some fun kind of game stuff, some, different things that we go into um, different areas. I know we have that same heart to come out and do games and kind of speak and not always be just, um, not that we don't want to hear stories, but right. that we do some kind of cool other like things. Like do events, do something. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So great. We should all go get, I, everyone should go get tattooed. That's what we should do. For sure. <laughs> Definitely. But you know how much I love you and I want you to get here soon. And I want to hear back from you, your first workout. I want to see, I want to hear back if they can um, video it or you can have it recorded. I'd love to see the, um, what you do when you go to the physical therapy, when you give that talk. Oh yeah. 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 I so will, see if they sure. can record it. I'll, I'll see if I can. That'll be cool. To yeah. Hear. That'd be awesome to hear. I got to get some more details about it and all that stuff. I think the lady, the teacher's off this week or something. So. Okay. Yeah, that's it, it should be good. It'll be cool. Go back yeah, to my old alma sure. mater. I'm gonna wear all my Michigan State stuff. <laughs> then I'm coming there with Michigan stuff. <laughs> well, tell me if you want to do maybe we could do a sit up or something like that challenge. We could do I do want to get back to the challenges. I'm okay. sure. I got man, like I said, I've I've lost a lot of muscle tone. I've lost a lot of strength. I gotta get it back. Will you tell me what challenge you want to do? I'll do it with you. Right. We can as do much as I don't want to do it and don't want to deal with that stupid song forever. Maybe we could do a different song. To bring Sally up, like the squat challenge. Well, that's what I really need right now because of my legs. Like that would be key. Can one. you do that right now though? I mean, I should be doing it. So yeah. Okay. Well, we'll do this. <laughs> we'll do this. We'll we'll start it. You tell we me when we'll start it. We could do that. I'll do it with you. We'll start it up. Mm -hmm. Deal? Sure. Sure. All right. All right. So you guys, that, get ready. We're going to do the squat challenge. Song Bring Sally stuck up. in my head for Yes, I'll get it stuck in my head. Years again. But I'll do it with you. I commit. <laughs> okay? I commit to do it with you. All right. It was All a good right. one last we'll time. It. it was really good. I liked it. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. We're going to say goodbye, but we'll say hello because you're going to hear a lot back from us. So yes. we're going to do our squat challenge. And yeah. we're going to see what Adam does on this Um talk he's going to have yeah. where he's going to check out them all. check out all my social yeah, media all your stuff 
I post so I don't a lot even have on to say that. it because it's going to yep. be there. And I'm really happy about this. This is like my new official. It looks MF really with awesome. The wrong MF or logo. I really like that. Really, it looks yeah, really cool. It was, I love it. That's my official one. I like it. I just need to when build are the a t-shirts coming now. out. I'm gonna make some new ones for the walk. Okay. And then yeah. I'm probably gonna make new ones for the bike run as well. So good. Extra I'll small. See how it goes. I don't know if I can do extra <laughs> small. Because the logo is so big. Yeah. It know. still fits there. It's just smaller. Yeah, we'll see. I'll the see lions fit do. here. Lions, it's extra small. Well, that might not be the same size <laughs> logo as all the rest of them. Okay. All right, let's try really hard. I will try really hard. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, I love you and thank you for being on here. I can't Anytime. wait to have you back. You know, I love all right. talking with you and I've missed you. It's been a while. I missed you too. All right. Well, you hold on. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being on another episode of Move It or Lose It. And you will see us back next week. So give us your feedback. Let us know what you want to hear this year. Another full year of new and exciting things and move it or lose it. Have a great day, guys. And Adam, our new thing is on the count of three, disrupt MS. Ready? That's what we do now? Okay. Yep. Okay. One, two, three. Disrupt, disrupt MS. MS. That wasn't very good. Let's try it again. We, you like One, pause after three. One, one, two, two three. three. Disrupt, disrupt MS. MS. <laughs> Try it again. One more time. One, two, three. Disrupt MS. Good you job. Didn't even, you didn't even say anything. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I love you. All right, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on Move It or Lose It podcast, where you can again find us every Tuesday. And also wherever you like your podcast, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, join us on that. And we can't wait to see you again. We're going to have a lot of exciting guests and working together. And as always, you'll hear us say at the end of every podcast, we are stronger together. So let's do it. Let's become stronger together. Have a great day.